And welcome to Multi-Level Mondays, a weekly series all about pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, multi-level marketing, and other forms of business fraud. I'm the Illuminati, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a CBD MLM known as Hempworks. As I'm sure you're all aware, over the past few years, growing acceptance around marijuana and its potential health benefits has led to a boom in the legal cannabis industry. A plant that was once associated with stoner culture is now a thriving multi-billion dollar industry that branches into healthcare, pharmaceuticals, consumer products, and agriculture. If you have not heard of what CBD is, it stands for cannabis oil. And as explained by Investopedia, it's one of the many molecules found in the cannabis plant known as cannabinoids. Unlike THC, however, CBD does not have psychoactive properties. And in other words, it means it doesn't make you high, which makes it a very desirable product for providing medical relief for ailments such as poor sleep, seizures, or various forms of physical pain. Hemp and marijuana are both varieties of the cannabis sativa plant. The difference between the two is that hemp has a higher CBD content and a lower THC content while marijuana has the opposite, where it's a lower CBD content and a higher THC content. A large part of this has to do with the 2018 Farm Bill, which Congress and former President Donald Trump passed in December that year, which federally legalized CBD products as long as they were produced in a manner in compliance with the bill. One of the main conditions being that CBD produced must not contain over 0.3% THC. Before this, CBD was only legal on a state-to-state basis. The passing of this 2018 farm bill greatly expanded Hempwork's potential customer base. But what does this have to do with MLMs? Well, let's get into talking about Hempworks. Overall, Hempworks is a relatively newer MLM founded less than five years ago back in 2017. And as you saw with the history of the bill and CBD becoming legalized in 2018, this kind of adds up. Now, this specific MLM is actually based in Las Vegas, Nevada, but source their hemp products from a farm in Kentucky, something the Huns love to brag about, it being American made and all of that goodness. According to Brookings, Kentucky is actually one of the best places in the world to cultivate hemp. The nonprofit organization Tooth and Advertising does a pretty good job of going into their background, noting that Hempworks was founded by Jenna Zagel and her husband Josh less than five years ago, again, in 2017. Her husband Josh is the founder of My Daily Choice, which he founded in November 2014 after a five year long stint with the automotive product MLM Syntec Global, which God, I didn't even know that was an MLM, but there really is an MLM for everything. When Jenna and Josh met, Jenna was an affiliate for My Daily Choice and gained quite the following as a My Daily Choice affiliate by using social media to sell her products. The story about Hempworks is that when Jenna was diagnosed with celiac disease in 2014, she turned to CBD products after reading about their benefits. Hempworks is a subsidiary of My Daily Choice, a conglomerate of many brands with not much in common with each other. As mentioned on My Daily Choice's homepage, their subsidiaries include Hempworks, Daily Sprays, which sells potent pocket-sized sprays for daily wellness for everything from weight loss to cognitive function, Mantra Essential Oils, which is basically My Daily Choice's version of Young Living, High Life Travel, which is a travel type MLM that provides discounts among other things, and lastly, Akash, a financial forum for Forex and cryptocurrency trading. Now, Hempworks is obviously the biggest company of my Daily Choices group by far. And maybe it's just me, but I wouldn't exactly feel 100% comfortable buying CBD from a company that also has its hands in all sorts of weird other businesses like essential oils and crypto and Forex and all this shit. Hempworks is based in the US, but has expanded to also do sales in Canada, the EU, Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, and Kenya over the last few years. While My Daily Choice operates globally, Hempworks simply cannot, given different countries having different regulations around CBD. 
Hempworks has secured itself as one of the top CBD brands in the industry, which is largely due to their skillful and deceptive marketing tactics. The finance guy advises that although the market for cannabis and related products is one of the fastest growing in the world, this however is not a guarantee of success. Many people make the mistake of believing that because CBD shows promise, buying into the industry is bound to be profitable. Hempworks is a successful company, but the people it promotes as successful are outliers and from the top of that little itty bitty pyramid like structure. Pro MLM website Business for Home outlines some key statistics and figures on their pages about Hempworks. In 2020, My Daily Choice's annual revenue was $178 million, up 5% from the year before. For decades, the day 420 has been celebrated as National Marijuana Day. Hempworks has taken full advantage of this and has historically used it as a big marketing day with their annual buy one, get one free sale. For instance, this past 420 was a record breaking for My Daily Choice. In a single day, they made over $12 million in sales, gained over 2000 new affiliates and over 6,000 new customers and over 1500 rejoining My Daily Choice and over 500 rank advancements. So needless to say, this company is definitely growing and not stopping anytime soon, but at what cost? That question can be easily answered by looking at My Daily Choice's income disclosure page. It shows that they're 2018 and 2019 numbers along with many statistics below it. So let's just point out the most notable of the few. In this reporting period from January 1st, 2018 to December 1st, 2019, the average annual income for active and inactive affiliates was $592.62. The median annual income for affiliates was $0. Compared to other MLMs, these numbers are relatively similar, but it proves how unlikely it is to make a living off of these. Doesn't matter if you change industries or change products, the numbers are pretty universally the same if you're involved in an MLM. The average numbers are higher because of the earnings at the top, because you've got these massive downlines that make tons of money off the people who are constantly buying products while not being able to sell those products. It's an unsurprising statistic with the additional statistic saying that only 25.8% of affiliates continue their business after the first year. My Daily Choice goes on to state that expenses for affiliates can be hundreds or thousands of dollars annually and that according to a 2018 company survey, the average annual expenses affiliates occurred are $1,608. Truth in Advertising also reported that in order to be eligible for all commissions and bonuses, distributors have to buy $200 worth of products a month or 2,400 annually. Of course, they then state the legal disclaimers they must, that any display of potential earnings is misleading and that the income disclosure should not be guarantees of income. They then have the nerve to say that success with My Daily Choice results only from successful sales efforts which require hard work, diligence, and leadership. Your success will depend upon how effectively you exercise these qualities. This sort of attitude is used a lot by these companies that if you don't succeed, it is reflective of your work ethic and skills. These systems set people up to fail and then blame it all on you. It's just crazy to think that people actually want to work in these types of companies given the risks and given really just the mental anguish you have to go through. Unless of course, you know, they're not reading the income disclosure page, which I wouldn't be surprised. It's really difficult for a lot of people to understand this and they just see a chart with a bunch of numbers and just kind of ignore it. And when looking at Zwaggle's Telegram channels, it seems as if My Daily Choice has been making a slow launch into Latin America, but has not officially launched yet. It is difficult to find information about their entrance into the Latin American market. Daily CBD, a CBD blog site, explains how while hemp is a native plant for the region, the lack of clear regulations makes it difficult for new companies to enter the market. Some countries have outlawed it, others allow it for medical use only, and few have fully legalized it. The main takeaway is that My Daily Choice has been able to make its way into the Latin American market, but Hempworks is not quite there yet. Hempworks, of course, as we've said, specializes in CBD products, which are derived from the cannabis plant. One thing Hempworks does well is variety. And they sell literally any variety of a CBD product you could imagine. They sell CBD soft gel capsules, CBD topical creams, hemp hair and body products, CBD facial masks, not COVID-19 stuff like skincare masks, CBD bath bombs, CBD coffee, CBD gummies, and even CBD pet products, though their most popular product by far would have to be their CBD tinctures. Tinctures are supplements that are most commonly taken sublingually or under the tongue. 
As explained by Healthline, sublinguals are effective because they go directly into the bloodstream as opposed to orally where it goes through the digestive system and are not metabolized by the liver. While there is some evidence that CBD can be helpful at alleviating pain and other symptoms for people, it is also important to keep in mind that CBD products are considered supplements. If you were paying attention in the recent supplements episode, you would know that statements about their efficacy are not evaluated by the FDA and that marketing any products as having the ability to treat, cure, or alleviate symptoms would put the company at risk. Back in the summer of 2017, when the company was in its first year, the CEO, Josh, had warned affiliates about making medical claims when marketing HempWorks products because of regulators like the FDA and Health Canada. However, it seems like not everyone got the message. Only one CBD product has been approved by the FDA, and that is Epidiolex for the treatment of two rare and severe types of epilepsy. And this product only got approved after meeting the FDA's rigorous criteria. Truth in Advertising compiled a list of over 100 false claims made by HempWorks and its affiliates, such as some of the following. Can slow down and kill cancer cells. CBD oil helps with seizures, multiple sclerosis, schizophrenia, Crohn's, insomnia. I have triple negative breast cancer. I've been in chemo for over a year and I have six more months to go. I started taking drops and I can't believe how quickly it's making my life better. Truth in Advertising reached out to the CEO and got a response from Eric McGuinness, HempWorks' director of compliance. In response to the false claims like the one above, McGuinness responded with a statement indicating the company is in the process of reviewing every item in the above article and every entry in the health and income claims databases Truth in Advertising compiled. As of 9-6-18, HempWorks has removed 83 of more than 100 health claims and 35 of more than 50 income claims. In addition, McGinnis said HempWorks has suspended several distributors and terminated one in response to Truth in Advertising's findings. In 2019, HempWorks fell into some legal trouble in the UK for this very issue. While no lawsuit seems to have ever been filed, the UK Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency reported to the extract that the HempWorks affiliates had violated UK law by making medical claims. Similar to the last story from 2018, affiliates had raved about the products treating sleep issues, urinary problems, and menopause problems, and so on and so on. When confronted about the issue, HempWorks responded that they take compliance very seriously and that any posts that are not compliant are flagged and the affiliate is educated on how to market products compliantly. The company is vague about what education actually means and that's likely why the cycle continues. Not all cases about false claims are reported either and they're abundant on social media. HempWorks is still a relatively new company, so it makes sense that they may not have dealt with many legal issues yet. I would not be surprised if they were faced with some in the future, considering how they still proliferate online today. There are still groups dedicated to the sole purpose of sharing their testimonials. The problem with these affiliate testimonials is that they lack evidence and are not guarantees of individual success, whether that be with medical claims or income claims. Compliance with federal health authorities is not the only controversy HempWorks has found themselves involved in. Their partner companies, as well as their owners, have their fair share of dirt too. So let's switch gears and take a look at that. The farm HempWorks sources its hemp from is GenCana Global. On their website, they describe themselves as a vertically integrated producer of hemp, hemp-derived cannabinoids, and an array of finished goods that incorporate best-in-class CBD and other cannabinoid ingredients. One notable thing under its private label section on its website is that HempWorks is not the only company they supply to, inferring that there are other companies like HempWorks producing products of the same quality from this manufacturer. Simply put, GenCana allows anyone to start up their own CBD company while allowing them to create their own unique products using their supplies. GenCana themselves has been in some hot water and actually went bankrupt last year. They filed for voluntary chapter 11 bankruptcy in February, 2020 with the purpose of organizing and continuing operations. The company has been operating as OGGUSA Inc. since its assets were bought out in the bankruptcy proceedings. So why did GenCana file for bankruptcy, you might ask? 
Well, these troubles first came to light back in October, 2019, because a group of contractors claimed Gen Canna owed them more than $13 million and filed to keep possession of the property Gen Canna had leased for a new facility in Mayfield, Kentucky. The plans for that hemp processing facility suffered delays and cost overruns, which have left it pretty much as an empty site at this point. According to a local journalist, Eric Walker, the processing site is likely to remain dormant with no real timeline until the legal actions are settled. Since that first lawsuit, other lawsuits followed in 2020, leading to the company's bankruptcy. In addition to not properly paying its contractors, Gen Canna made some questionable loans. The chairman of its board of directors, Michael Falcone, has overseen a $750,000 loan given to the company Southern Tier Hemp and also used other Gen Canna funds to pay growers affiliated with Southern Tier Hemp. This was not the only deal Gen Canna made. As stated on Hemp Today, Gen Canna also signed a hemp grower agreement with a company called Lake Breeze Farms LLC, was contracted to grow hemp for Southern Tier, according to the complaint, and served as guarantor on the $800,000 in transactions between Southern Tier and hemp grower Nanticoke Gardens. Both Lake Breeze and Nanticoke are based in New York. The lawsuit, which is in federal bankruptcy court, alleges Southern Tier and Falcone paid two employees of the New York company with Gen Canna funds. Gen Canna claims it had both oral and written promises that the money extended to Southern Tier would be repaid. The article goes on to claim that Gen Canna has been filing lawsuits like these in an attempt to recoup money in the wake of their bankruptcy. Kentucky's leading industrial hemp trade group, the Kentucky Hemp Industries Association, spoke out against Gen Canna last February. The association is in the state chapter of the National Hemp Association. Their president, Tate Hall, said to the Louisville Courier Journal, Gen Canna is a fraud corporation. They knew they weren't going to have the money to pay the farmers. To really understand how the organization feels, it's worth considering that Gen Canna is a member of the Kentucky Hemp Industries Association. Even Kentuckian politicians have spoken out against them, one being US Congressman and Kentucky's former agriculture commissioner, James Comer, who was commissioner back when Gen Canna was established in 2014. Originally, he publicly supported them, but had this to say to the Louisville Courier Journal in the same article. It's pretty sickening to see the spending spree they've been on, knowing how much money they owe farmers and contractors in Kentucky, he said. Gen Canna has certainly given a black eye to the industry. Now, let's just also consider that Hemp Works, the topic of today's episode, is an MLM, and MLMs are notorious for mistreating employees, workers, independent contractors, so is it surprising that they're working with a company like Gen Canna? I argue it's not surprising, but it is disappointing. But this is exactly telling of what Hemp Works does stand for, given this partnership was not actually severed. And speaking of severed, now would be a good time to talk about the fact that HempWorks' market in Canada was actually cut off for a while. Back in 2018, HempWorks was under fire for selling their products illegally. In May of that year, sales were halted as CBC investigation found it was not approved by Health Canada, the country's national health department, basically. According to federal authorities, CBD oil was illegal without a medical marijuana prescription until October, 2018, when cannabis was to be legalized. This meant it should not have been able to be imported into the country. It planned on starting its Canadian launch in August, 2018, but that was put on hold after the investigation. Back then, HempWorks was working with Mado Creation Corp, which is a My Daily Choice webinar, and it was referred to as an indigenous medical cannabis clinic that specializes in manufacturing and distribution of hemp-derived CBD products. Despite the appealing description, Health Canada confirmed that neither HempWorks nor Mado Creation Corp were federally licensed to sell in Canada. The only legal commercial CBD for medical purposes was sold through licensed companies approved by Health Canada. Not to mention, Mado Creation Corp had a sketchy past behind it as well. The company was only registered in Kamloops, British Columbia in May, 2018. Keep in mind, the intended launch date for HempWorks was August, 2018. Its CEO, Vern Parkhurst, was not even licensed to produce cannabis. Court records demonstrate he has quite the criminal record too. The CBC investigation stated, Parkhurst has a criminal conviction for fraud under 5,000 in 1998 and for possession of a prohibited weapon in 1999. He was fined in both cases. 
In 2006, he was convicted of mischief or damage under $5,000 for which he was given a suspended sentence and ordered to pay restitution. Health Canada performs extensive background checks on its potential partners and it's likely Mado Creation Corp did not register knowing that Parkhurst would fail the background check. Going further into Parker's troubles, he had some trouble with Quebec Research Goliath Tech, a company specializing in custom piles for construction. Its CEO, Julian Riozing, claims Parker's violated their franchise agreement. He has hired lawyers to pursue legal action against Parkhurst and recover more than $80,000 in equipment and unpaid franchise fees. When contacted by the CBC, Parkhurst lawyer Harrison Jordan basically said Parkhurst denied all allegations. He also said, you don't have to be a licensed producer per se to make a mark in the industry and went on to say there are ways for people to get into the legal cannabis industry without touching the plant. Jordan also claimed that Mado Creation Corp was in development stages of establishing their cannabis business and would be in compliance with Canadian law. Since no products were sold by Mado Creation Corp yet at that time, it would not establish a telemedicine service or registration fee yet. The plan through HempWorks was for affiliates to have a prescription card as well as those who would buy from affiliates. In the My Daily Choice webinar mentioned before, potential affiliates and customers alike would have to pay a $150 registration fee to Mado Creation Corp. In this agreement, Mado would connect HempWorks affiliates and customers with doctors to get prescription cards in order to have affiliates buy and sell oils and have customers buy oils. So. Yeah, that's a bit of a complicated plan and Canadian HempWorks fans were obviously not happy. There were even some heated exchanges between their founder, Jenna Zaggill, and some Canadian affiliates. Some notable remarks are, Stranger, so let me get this straight. We will have to not only buy a prescription card to sell, but our customers will have to buy a prescription card to buy HempWorks products? Jenna, it's amazing how unappreciative people are. You ask for Canada back, but due to your government, you can't be happy with our solution. You can buy our competitors illegally and risk going to jail. That's the alternative. Sheesh, now I remember why I left Facebook. Jenna, I got a good idea. Don't buy HempWorks. Get watered down CBD that doesn't do anything. Personally, I think it's quite honorable that Jenna is encouraging people not to buy HempWorks products given how her husband is the CEO. It's probably the only solid advice you'll actually hear from her. But anyway, back to Mato Creation Corp. Further research made it difficult to track the company past 2018, so there's really little to no records available. I think it's clear to say HempWorks has made some shady business dealings. Even if Mado Creation Corp is out of the picture and HempWorks got into the Canadian market eventually, this does not absolve HempWorks of any wrongdoing. In creating their marketing plan, there is no way HempWorks was not aware that Mado Creation Corp was not licensed in Canada. And it must have been aware that they themselves were not licensed in Canada either. They only put out a public statement about postponing their Canadian launch once they were caught. So just keep that in mind. The Facebook statement read, August 1st, 2018 is no longer a confirmed launch date. As industry guidelines evolve, we want to be 100% confident in our launch. We have experts who are doing more compliance and regulatory due diligence. Now, speaking of these Facebook interactions, there's quite a few interesting ones from the CEO and his wife, Jenna and Josh, and they've got some very interesting anti-science views that we're gonna dig into. But before we do, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor. Is dinner one of the more stressful meals of your day? Do you just sometimes wish that there was just something easy to follow along that's semi-brainless and still give you a delicious result? Well, if that's the case, then you need to know about today's sponsor, HelloFresh, because that's exactly what I think about when I use HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal delivery kit, and they deliver fresh ingredients to your door every single week with beautifully laminated recipe cards with pictures so that you can easily take the stress out of making dinner. And most of HelloFresh's meals are on the table in about 30 minutes, but if that's even too strenuous, they even have quick and easy meals that are about 15 to 20 minute dinners, and it's really perfect when you are just on a time crunch. HelloFresh offers 27 or more recipes to choose from every single week, from vegetarian meals and calorie smart options to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. So if you wanna get started with HelloFresh, make sure to go to hellofresh.com slash 12 MLM and use code 12 MLM for 12 free meals, including shipping. Again, that's hellofresh.com slash 12 MLM, use code 12 MLM for 12 free meals, including free shipping. 
Today's episode is also sponsored by Credit Karma Money. Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions, and now they want to help even more. With Credit Karma Money Spend Account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. Credit Karma Money is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. And when you use your Credit Karma Money debit card, you can win daily Instant Karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. You just pay with your debit card, and if you win, you'll be notified on the spot and Instant Karma Cash will be added back to your spend account. And Credit Karma has already given away over $3 million. Open your FDIC insured spending account for free. There's no minimum balance requirements, no overdraft fees, and free withdrawals from a network of over 50,000 ATMs. Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning Instant Karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning Instant Karma. Karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant Karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. There's no purchase necessary. Exclusions and terms do apply and you'll have to see rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Incorporated, a member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits do apply. Now onto that topic of Facebook. Let's talk about Jenna and Josh's questionable views on the coronavirus. On the city of Las Vegas' Facebook page on a post about a pop-up vaccination site at a local festival, Jenna commented how, even with all the spam, I am still not getting vaccinated, throwing out trash emoji times three. She then goes on to argue with those in the comments, even posting a photo of her mask, so to speak. Jenna has posted multiple pictures of her and her husband wearing these shitty, stupid mesh masks, which provide absolutely no protection against COVID-19. It's clear they do not believe in the efficacy of masks, which have actually been proven to stop and slow the spread of COVID-19. In a recent post from May 17th, Jenna posted false claims about the coronavirus vaccines, suggesting that those who get it are being injected with poison and comparing the way pharmaceutical companies are promoting their vaccines to abusive relationships and cults. Attached to the post is a form from Premier Radiology inquiring about a patient's vaccination status. And this is because the side effects can include swelling of the lymph nodes as detected on a mammogram. In other words, the side effects from the COVID-19 vaccine can produce a false reading for breast cancer. The reason swelling of the lymph nodes is possible is because the body is building an immunity to COVID-19 as explained by the CDC. And this is what Jenna uses, and she uses this form to suggest that the doctors are making her friend sign a waiver to get a mammogram as confirmation that she did not get breast cancer from the coronavirus vaccine. She then goes on to make this baseless claim. If you got the vaccine, you may have breast cancer now and the doctor doesn't want to be blamed, when in fact, it was from being injected with poison. One strategy she employed in the past to avoid Facebook's misinformation trackers is to do the vaccine emoji instead of saying coronavirus vaccine. It's almost as if she knows her claims have no basis in reality, let alone the medical community, but is so far down the conspiracy rabbit hole that she believes the mainstream medical community cannot be trusted and is out to get her and put her in Facebook jail. The other two are a photo and video of people putting magnets up to the injection site of their family members' COVID-19 vaccines and the magnet sticking. Alas, her post did get flagged for false information with independent fact checkers confirming that none of the COVID-19 vaccines authorized for emergency use by the US Food and Drug Administration contained metals or any other magnetic ingredient. Unfortunately, this does not seem to stop any of Jenna's followers, which all seem to be Hempworks affiliates, mind you, who express their concern and worry in the comments. And oh boy, don't get me started on the comments in these replies because they're just, it, it's comical in a way that like it's depressing because you know real people said this and you're, you're just like, you can't be this stupid, right? But then you see some of this and you go, God damn, there really are people this stupid. One reply suggests her father got Alzheimer's from the vaccine and that people who reject her claim are insensitive about Alzheimer's. Now, Alzheimer's is absolutely tragic, but there is no confirmed link between the COVID-19 vaccine and Alzheimer's. Jenna replied to the woman's comment saying that the heavy metals from the vaccine go straight to the brain. Neurodegenerative disorders soon follow. There's a link between childhood vaccine emoji and autism too. Heavy metals in brain, your dad needs to detox. And We've covered 
so many times about autism and Autism Speaks' hurtful views as well. And just, this is not true. I, I don't know how many times this has to continually be repeated, but getting a vaccine will not give you autism and autism should not be used as a scapegoat for some kind of punishment for getting a vaccine either. Having autism is not some scary fucking thing that you should just throw people to the side for or treat them as second class citizens. That like perpetuating this type of shit is just, mm, it's pretty fucking infuriating. I'm gonna, we're gonna breathe this one out. <sighs> All right, we're gonna continue. While many of her followers and Hempworks affiliates are believed to be pseudoscience believers and anti-vaxxers, it's obviously in very poor, poor taste for her to post her views so publicly given the following that she has and the company she runs. To publicly denounce not only masks, but the coronavirus that are helping us slowly return to normal life is just sad, upsetting, and unfortunately, unsurprising for MLM companies. So to sum up today's episode about Hempworks, Hempworks' beginnings are rooted in false claims and continue to be an issue for the company in the present. Hempworks is by far the most successful of My Daily Choices companies, but that's only overall. On an individual level, most people suffer losses with Hempworks as reflected in their income disclosure statements. Even if their products are of mediocre quality, that does not change the fact that the companies they associate with to create those products have incredibly sketchy histories. And Jenna and Josh Zagil as the heads of the company, well, they do a good job of representing the company for what it really stands for, pseudoscience and struggles. So with that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure you are liking, following, and subscribing so that you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. And if you wanna connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure to go to my Linktree link in the description box. It's going to have a little pop-up page for all of my URLs to all of my other projects I'm involved in, social media, like literally anything else that I do outside of here, that's where you're gonna find it. So again, thank you all so much for making it to another episode. Love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.